I'm talking about the sovereign debt trial of the century. I'm Cardiff Garcia of FT Alphaville. I'm joined here in New York by my colleague, Joseph Cottrell. So to catch you up very quickly, in 2001, Argentina defaulted on its international bonds and a few years later offered to exchange those bonds for a new series that were worth a lot less than the original. Now, 93% of the bondholders accepted the swap, but 7%, including a hedge fund called Elliott Associates, did not accept and sought an injunction in U.S. courts to force Argentina to pay them at the same time that they paid back the other 93% who did accept the swap. But in a stunning decision, just last October, Argentina lost. And here to take us through that is Joseph. So first of all, why don't you just tell us why anybody should care about this case? Cardiff. If the FT couldn't legally pay our two salaries unless and until it paid its printer's bill, that would be kind of weird, wouldn't it? Yes, and I definitely hope they can't do that. Anyway, sovereigns don't do that, and they really don't do that when they're restructuring their debt. When you're asking people to take losses, uh, you basically promise that you won't have to pay other people in full at the same time, otherwise they all look stupid. Uh, that deal works, life goes on, but one day, Argentina loses this case. Uh, it wrecks that routine for everyone else. Uh, the skies weep blood, uh, sovereign restructuring well beyond this one country which hates its holdouts suddenly looks a lot less stable. Okay, very dramatic, big stakes. Uh, why don't you catch us up on the case itself? What's happened most recently? Argentina keeps losing. Uh, they tried to refight the case, but US courts eventually said you can't do that anymore. But then the court said, OK, Argentina, if you have a better idea for paying these holdouts, but you do have to pay them at the same time as everyone else, let's hear it. That sounded a bit like sovereign bankruptcy, uh, the idea that the court would tell creditors what they can get. But Argentina said no. Uh, they said, we cannot give the holdouts anything better than what we gave the restructured all those years ago. That's fair. That's equal. But I don't think that will wash with the court because they already said the holdouts were well within their rights not to take that restructuring. So what happens next? The court's final warning comes out in one, two, maybe three months. If Argentina doesn't get what it wants, it will go straight to the Supreme Court. But I don't think that will work either. So Argentina might have to start thinking about how and where it pays uh, its restructured bonds uh, so that they don't get seized by the holdouts. It might have to change that system. That kind of puts New York on trial itself because uh, that's where sovereigns issue and kind of pay their debt. But if they abandon New York, if they abandon foreign law overall for issuing their debt, then maybe legal protection for creditors gets a bit riskier overall. And that would be kind of ironic given what this case is all about. All right. If you want to catch our ongoing coverage of the case, go to ft.com forward slash Alphaville and search for Joseph's Pari Pasu series. Again, that's ft.com forward slash Alphaville Pari Pasu. Thanks very much.